Hello, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, and in today's video, I'm just taking a quick look at these transmitter pucks from Amazon. Or Sourcing Map is the actual dealer on Amazon that's selling them. Um, I've had this one for a while. This is the original one I had. I did have one more video to make with this temperature puck alongside the Finerses and the Mr. Signal units to show that you can use a 24 volt supply from this to power them whilst you're making the measurements. Uh, and unfortunately, whilst I was doing that, this one went pop and uh, stopped working, which is quite curious because it hasn't actually done that many hours and it's only been sat on a bench. It's not in any harsh environment like it might be in a uh, industrial setting where I presume it's aimed for. Um, so what I have done is I've obtained another unit here from sourcing map slash Amazon. That's a slightly different range, so I'll have to do a new set of results for that. But I'll do another video on this one and the use with the 24 volt sourcing from this. In this video, I'll just show you quickly what's gone wrong with this unit. And then I'm actually gonna try and break it open and just see if I can determine what's inside or it might well be that it's just potted inside, which is what I'm expecting, which in that case will be the end of the video, but I've not lost anything by doing this. Um, so you can see if I just zoom in here, hopefully you can see this is the unit that is running at this moment in time. I've got a GoPro running on the screen of the power supply, so you can see the current that's being drawn. I'll put that up here. So you can see we are currently drawing uh, 20 milliamps at 24 volts supply. And you can see on the output here that we're working okay. Well, I'm getting 3.7 volts, which it should be about 3.75 volts for the particular setting that I've put on with these resistors here. Um, so I'll just swap everything over to power this unit up. Um, and then I will plug this one in. And you can see immediately our supply has jumped up to uh, 97 milliamps now. And our output should be around about five volts for this particular setting. And we are reading zero volts. We're not getting any output out of it whatsoever. So quite clearly it has failed. I'll um, just have a quick rearrangement and I'll show you the other aspect that's telling me this has failed as well. So we've just rearranged everything and we've got our thermal imaging camera set up here. Okay, so there's the temperature there, and you can see the two units down here on the normal picture. There's the one on the left, there's the one on the right. You can see I'm running 27 degrees C on the failed one, and the other one isn't even showing a temperature, normal ambient. Um, so I'll capture this and put this on the screen as well, so you can see this for yourselves. Um, so that's the issue that I've got. Uh, we'll pack up now, and I'll break this unit open and see if we can see anything inside. So we have gained access to our little temperature puck here and it isn't potted. Uh, and I guess that gives you another issue, doesn't it? That uh, depending on the environment that these are installed in, they are obviously susceptible to humidity and moisture ingress and dirt and the like. Um, I was expecting it to be uh, all glued up and not much use, but it gives us another little thing to look at. Um, these are soldered in and like a numbskull I just smack them out um, so I've broken the case doing that. Uh, the back was just glued on with some what, silicon kind of substance uh, so again not much there's no real seal there to prevent any dirt or moisture getting in there so yeah a bit weak in that respect um, I guess that's why you're paying 10 quid 15 quid for them isn't it uh, we'll just uh, power this up and put the thermal imager back on it and we'll see uh, if we can spot what's actually uh, overheating within the board. A good little test for the thermal imaging camera really. Okay so I've connected everything up uh, we've got our thermal imager running on it again and we can see the top corner up here is where the heat is being generated. Again I'll put this thermal imaging up so you can see for yourselves um, so that tells me where the fault is, somewhere on one of those components in there. I'll have a look under the microscope, there may be something obvious, um, but it's all SMD, so quite hard to see. You can uh, actually smell it as well now, though. Now it's out of its case. Uh, very obvious that there is a, an overheating failure going on in there. Um, okay, so we'll just knock him off and cool him down. We'll take a look at the board here and see if we can determine what's going on. 
Uh, the area of concern is on this corner of the board. I put a microscopic shot of the components in this area and you can see there's some overheating on this particular resistor here. Uh, we've got our meter set up for ohms so we can measure the ohmage there and just see. Um, we've got 202 ohms there as you can see on the picture. Um, luckily enough they are actually putting resistance values and capacitance values and voltages as part of the markings on this board so we know it should be 200 ohms so 202 ohms is absolutely fine. Uh, we've got another device here which is a 4148 which I believe to be a diode um, so we can switch our meter to diode our meter we're positive in the left hand here and then negative in the right hand and see there we've got 0 0.621 volts so that looks to be okay in one direction we'll just try it the other direction and you can see we are oh well we're not getting any reading whatsoever so it looks like the diode is performing okay um, so this is our plus 24 volts we can see that we go in here and you can see we've got a reading through so plus 24 volts is coming through the diode and we go to the resistor here we've got again the same a little bit more voltage drop because of the resistor but that looks to be the track for the 24 volts to come through and then it goes through and onto this pin here of this device if I flip the board over again I'll put a uh, picture up from a microscope to show you the identification of that it's actually a 7815 which is a 15 volt linear voltage regulator it looks like the board needs 15 volts to operate from the 24 volts um, on the actual let's line them up again for you the actual terminal configuration from this will be V in coming up here ground and V out so if I put my meter through from plus 24 volts we know it went through onto V in. If I go to ground you can see I've got a bit more of a voltage drop but 0.950 there. It looks like there's a short between V in and ground on this device here uh, and if I go to V out you can see I've got 1.5 uh, so it looks like the failure is on this little linear voltage regulator there. Uh, I don't have a replacement for that regulator but what I will do is desolder it and short it out and then I can just put 15 volts direct into the board to see if we can get it back up and running. Uh, just before I do that I'll show you um, over here the main IC for the board that's an OP07C it's a single op amp package and pin 7 on this is fed directly from the 15 volts over there this other chip here the only other one on the board is a 7660 uh, which is a CMOS supply converter chip and it looks like that is feeding into pin 4 which is the negative rail for this so I believe they're using this to convert the plus 15 volts to a minus 15 volts for the supply for the operational amplifier um, and that it's a pretty decent board there is a couple of dislodged components again I'll put some microscopic pictures up uh, this one here is a little bit dislodged and the actual IC itself looks like it's been dislodged I don't believe I did that when I dismantled the unit um, but you never know so we're going to do some solder work and we'll see if we can get this up and running so there's our little linear voltage regulator all removed Put to one side, you can see the link that I've put in there going from uh, V in through to V out. We'll flip the board over and we can do some testing again if we put them in the center of the screen. Um, so we're on diode mode on our meter, and originally we went through onto V in, and you can see we've got a voltage there. And we go on to the ground where there was a pretty much a short. You can see with 2.120 volts, which could be the maximum voltage on that Kiwit actually. Uh, and there's our reading through to V out there. So we'll reconnect everything all up as a temperature puck and we'll see if it started working. Okay, so we've reset everything now. You can see I've connected up the temperature puck back up to the power supply and some instrumentation. I am injecting 
via the SG-004 to simulate the PT-100 signal and if I just zoom up onto uh, the meter I'm using the U1461A uh, you can see here for the voltage measurement, the output voltage measurement you see I've got 10.01 volts for a 200 degrees C input coming in let's uh, drop him back down to zero which should be two volts so on zero degrees C going in and we're on 1.990 coming out which is within the two percent tolerance and the bottom end is minus 50 so we go to minus 50 there and we should be reading zero volts and we are reading 0 0.03 volts uh, so it is working fine uh, what I've actually done if we swing around onto the supply hopefully you can see here we are drawing 19 milliamps coming in and I'm putting in 18.80 volts and if I get my leads for my meter and I'll actually measure onto the link that I've used to bridge the voltage regulator and there's our zero there's there oops and you can see I'm reading 14.86 volt, 14.85 volts so that does adjust a little bit there could perhaps do with going up a little bit I'm not 100% sure what the accuracy is of the regulator or what it was set to and um, to get it to read I have actually had to play around with the calibration pots on uh, the device down here uh, where are we there we've got two calibration pots we've got a zero there and a span there that you can play around with to adjust the output voltage given for the different inputs so uh, it is working kind of well so in comparison to last time when I tested this with the SG-004A as the simulation and the U1461A as the actual output measurement I was point oh sorry minus 0.155 percent average tolerance this time haven't done all the readings I am now uh, minus 0.488 percent that's in comparison to the most accurate measurement system I have using the DMM7510 so we're not quite as good as we are before the repair but we are within uh, plus or minus two percent and as I said obviously I have bypassed the regulator so that can be having an effect on the system as well I will put this thermography picture up so you can see the difference certainly this section of the board is running a little bit cooler in comparison to what is last time so uh, we've achieved something there um, but we are picking up a bit more heat on some of the other components but obviously that's because the board is now actually running whereas in the previous thermography the board was actually dead because the supply was shorted out so there you go it's gone for a little bit longer than i thought because i didn't think i'd be able to do anything with it but i hope you found it interesting uh, thanks very much for watching and i'll see you again in the next video